All right, so let's discuss how the Panthers have been going about, you know, really trying to approach this whole COVID situation because you have to keep in mind that, you know, you have to protect your players. You have to protect your players, and, and by doing that, that helps, you know, that, that keeps on paying itself back because they're protecting their families, and that's helping to reduce the risk. But let's be honest. As a business, you know, your players represent your capital and you got to make sure that your players are healthy, that they're safe, that they're good. Because if, they're, if they are not safe, if they're not feeling comfortable about playing or whatever the case may be, you don't, you're not going to have a sport. And outside of the fact that, you know, there's billions of dollars at risk there, you know, there are there is like, you know, so many other things that are risk because, you know, the, the average person that is a working person, you know, that is our way to release and be able to connect and watch something, um, you know, to be able to enjoy our, watching our team play, to be able to unite and all this other stuff. And I feel like if every entity, whether it be sports or business or whatever, if just people in general start to take this more seriously, you know, we can sow the, you know, the, 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 the spread of Corona and just put us in a position of where things can get back to normal. Um, now I did watch a few things uh, that the Panthers were, you know, like like it was like a um, can't remember the name of it right now, but it's like a little like a little series that they put on to show you like kind of like how they do different things behind the scenes, and they do seem like they were taking it very seriously. Um, they had things where like as people are driving in, um, they have to get their temperature checked. Uh, all the all of the players, I believe coaches or whatever, they have these little trackers that they um, that they have, and they make sure that they told them like we're not trying to track your movements or nothing, but it's just making sure that you know that if you get too close to somebody else, it has this tracker, then you had then you now start to kind of beep to let you know, kind of keep the space and the distance. Um, they showed like a lot of things, man, like how they took the um, the typical uh, you know locker room has been broken down and has been uh, split up into different places. Like like what I mean by that is. Whereas I think like, you know, lockers are right next to each other. They've been trying to abide by the whole six foot apart locker thing. So what they've done is they've taken other rooms and whereas it, whereas it may have been uh, like, you know, used for something else, maybe a portion of the team now, their lockers are there so that way they can create more space. Um, other things that they do is like they try to make sure that uh, instead of where they would have had like all of the receivers, all of the running backs, this one position group would have been in one area together. When they actually did a, like a, a camera scan of the locker room, it was it was done differently. So like, let's just say you got a offensive lineman right here, a defensive lineman um, right here. Then next to that person is a receiver. Next to that person is a running back. And they said that the reason behind that um, was because they believe that, uh, you know, if one person, you know, God forbid gets sick, that won't wipe out a whole group. You know, that'll that'll give them some opportunity to where, you know, because they do have to, once again, protect, you know, protect their interests and say that, okay, well, if this person is sick, we can catch that. That person didn't spread that to the entire running back group, so now we have nobody to play running back. And so it was different things that they were doing like that. Um, they were showing that they, they created these things called suites. And it's like what each player, because you got to think about it like this. When you're in that building, it's not always that you, that you are like um, – you know, like in your locker or doing something like that, you might need time to study your playbook. You might need time to sit down and eat and clear your head. You spend a lot of time in this building. So the way that they did it was they took other rooms and they switched those rooms over and made those rooms suites. So that way each like player can have their own little area. Social distance can study and do what they needed to do. Um, they show like different temperature checks throughout different uh, parts of the building or whatever the case may be. Another thing that I thought was cool too is I thought about weightlifting. Like if you ever have been in gyms or if you ever lifted weights, you know that it's like kind of hard to be in a situation where people are moving around and it's like this little system, you know, that's moving around you, you know, like, you know, people touching everything. What they've done was, if I'm not mistaken, they said 15 people. Because you know, these weight rooms are pretty big, man. It's a professional facility. So, they had it to where only like 15 people could be in there at one time. But what they were doing was they also modify other aspects, like little other places to be, uh, you know, where they could lift weight. So, for instance, they got the regular weight room that 15 players could be in. And then I think it was like another enclosed area that they made it with where 15 more players could be in. And then they also had like the outside workouts where you could be doing, the, I don't know, flipping tires, uh, throwing medicine balls, doing squat jumps, whatever you're doing. Um, you know, you're doing uh, suicides running back and forth type stuff, like whatever you're doing, um, you know, they set it up to where they can say like, you know, they can have 45 players working out at one time. And so I thought that was real cool how they've been doing it. So now I feel like when it comes down to other sports, you know, the NBA has done it the best. 
Um, I'll be doing a video pretty much uh, talking about that, like my perspective with how the NBA went about doing this. Outside of players having like cabin fever because you can't see your girl or whatever the case may be, which I can understand is rough, you can't see your kids and everything. Um, you know, they've done it best because they were able to test people, quarantine them, make sure they were good. And then when you're in this bubble, you're greatly reducing the chance of somebody getting this thing, you know, by doing it like that. Now, I guess it may be harder for the NFL to do that for whatever reason. And then also keep in mind that for the NBA, the majority of their season was already completed. You know what I'm saying? It was just breaking down to who's going to now work their way into the playoffs, where do, where do you see the positions? And then from there, um, you know, where are you now as far as like, you know, working through the tournament? If teams lose, they go home or whatever. So they had a really good system. I feel like NFL has been trying to replicate uh, you know, their 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 way of doing that, but it's harder when your teams are spread out and people actually do still go home and their families and everything like that. So, you know, hopefully all of the players will be smart. Uh, it, it's hard because of what's going on right now. But from what I saw, they really seemed like they put a lot of effort into it. Um, they even went as far as to show how they were cleaning, like, you know, regularly, how they had, like, um these different machines that emitted this blue light type thing. I'm not, you know, I used to teach science, but don't get me wrong, I don't have all of that that knowledge whatever but it was something either either it was like to show um like you know the germs or something like that or it might have been you know the ultraviolet light or whatever the heat i could have been kill, killing the germ i don't know it looked cool like like little robots moving around but they had like some sort of thing like that that would check these rooms and they also had people that were on the staff that are walking around regularly and they were like cleaning up and like they were like they would show them like disinfecting things that had been touched um, you know, and they would like kind of mark these things off regularly, even like the footballs that were laid out there, they would mark these like footballs off. Like, yo, we've cleaned these footballs and we've disinfected these, we've done this. Um, so it's been a lot of things put in place to, that makes me feel good about that. Now moving forward, um, I do see, I did see like, I guess it might've been season ticket hold, season uh, ticket holders that they were calling to let them know, uh, they were not going to be able to have fans in the stand for like the first game. I don't anticipate that they're going to have fans in the stands in the near future because you got to think about it like this. These these things hold 70, 80,000 people, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't have that many people in one place. Like, we're just not in that place in the world right now. And I don't know whether they want to position it to where they have every six seat or whatever. I don't know. But for right now, they're kind of looking at it like we don't know the time frame in which we'll be able to bring fans back. Um, hopefully maybe they can do something in football. I don't know how they're going to do this. I know basketball, they were able to create things within the bubble where you can have like virtual fans and it looks, you know, still pretty similar because you're focused on the court. Football is different. You see football from different angles. It's a much bigger playing, you know, surface. So you seeing up into the stands, I'm not sure how they're going to do that. I personally don't care because I can watch arena football. So if they can just figure out a way to do that in the meantime, let's slow COVID, let's be smart. And then hopefully the world get back to normal and then we can buy our tickets and get back in there. But, um, you know, they were kind of, you know, looking at that from a business perspective and everything too, trying to figure out like how they could address that. So it was a lot of good footage of good things that they were showing or how the team was trying to work on that. Um, hopefully like that'll work well. Cause I know like some other leagues have not been doing as well, you know, whatever, but hopefully football would do well. Uh, and you know, we can, you know, have a good season, but most importantly, man, you, these are people with families, man, these players, you know, they got family, they got children, mom, dad, or, you know, whoever that they have loved ones like the rest of us. And, you know, hopefully these guys can stay safe and the, the workers can stay safe and, um, you know, we can slow the, the, the spread of this thing. So shout out to the team, man. It looked like they were doing good. Hopefully the rest of the teams are doing just as much or better so that way they can also put their perspective in place and help, you know, so the whole uh, spread of this thing and, you know, we can have a successful season. Everybody can be healthy. And I'm hoping, man, and praying that like next year sometime or later on this year, we can get back to normal. And then because I'm trying to be in some games by next year, I'm trying to be tailgating, having fun. All that type of stuff. But either way, uh, you know, shout out to the team for working hard and hopefully everything will be successful and um, keeping everybody healthy.